Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. If you are watching live, you will see a rolling chat on the right hand side. So please do say hello in the chat. And thank you to those that have already hit, it, hit the like button. Really helps the uh, channel and helps this video to get out to more people. So I'm really excited to talk about creating online ESL curriculum with someone who has created their own curriculum and it is available to other online independent teachers to use in their teaching business. So we'll get into that in just a second. I just want to say hello to folks that were here a little bit early. And I see a couple of Facebook users. If you are watching on Facebook, you will need to authorize StreamYard uh, to use your name. So that should be a link just underneath the video. If you want to click that, it will allow you to, to for us to see your name. And if you don't want to do that, that's okay too. But welcome to the Facebook users here. Um, hello to Kelly. What Kelly was the first one. And James is here in Vietnam. Good to have you, James. Meredith is here. Hello, hello. Um, Kat is here as well, ready for another great talk. Yes. And Facebook user says, can't wait to hear more from you today, Crystal. Wonderful. Um, there is a little poll on my YouTube live on the right hand side. And I asked if you were using uh, pre made lessons or if you are. Uh, making your own lessons. A lot of independent teachers right now or online ESL teachers are moving away from platforms and building their teaching businesses. And curriculum is often one of the uh, things that is a challenge to figure out what are you going to teach the students. So I'd be curious to know if you wouldn't mind uh, filling in that poll, whether or not you are making your own lessons or if you're using pre-made lessons or purchasing a pre-made curriculum. Uh, and then there's another option. A couple of people have chosen, I'm not an online teacher, hopefully not yet. Um, but this might inspire you to build your teaching business and to see the potential for uh, doing that as we talk about online ESL curriculum. So if you have any questions about curriculum, um, then please do put them in the comments. If you're looking for some support uh, along the way of your independent teaching journey, then I, I would love to encourage you to join my Facebook group. It's called Going Solo, Pivoting as an Online Teacher. A lot of us are kind of thrown into this with the companies crashing. So you are welcome to jump over there. You can search going solo, independent teaching, or you can find the link in the video description. And the second cohort of my program launch is launching on November the 29th. So if you're looking for a roadmap, some handholding, some support, um, you just don't know where to start, where you should be focusing, and you've got a million questions about how to get this off the ground, specifically with your platform teachers, then we would love to have you in the course. Uh, the doors are closing on Sunday to join. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, you can go to onlineteacherdude.com forward slash launch. And the sales page has some testimonials of students that were in the November cohort and you know, really answers all your questions if you're kind of on the fence about joining the course or if you haven't heard about the course, but this might uh, be something that you're looking for and a way to support you along this journey. So um, great. All right, let's 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 introduce Crystal. Are you ready, Crystal, down there? Wonderful. OK, we'll add you to the stream. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. I know you are in the UK, so it is, uh, what time is it now? In the it's middle of the afternoon. It's five past right? three. So I'll apologize in advance if my kid's getting home from school causes some background noise. I'm OK, really how old are your kids? <laughs> No ten, ten, nine, and six. Oh wow, you've really got your hands full. <laughs> and two dogs on top. And two dogs. <laughs> I just have a cat, so I mean, I'm busy with nice other and things. Quiet. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, welcome. Please tell us a little Thanks. bit about yourself. I know you're Canadian because I can. He, I know we've talked yeah. before, but uh, you, so you, you can, can tell us a little bit about one. that and your yeah. your teaching journey up to now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I finished my undergraduate degree in English literature way back when and I didn't know what to do with it like so many people who do a literature degree and yeah. I decided to incorporate that with love of traveling the world and broaden my horizons which brought me to Japan where I taught English as a second language to preschoolers and primary aged kids that was just a trip like it, <laughs> They were intense in Japan. I was teaching kids as young as six months old who literally couldn't hold their own heads up. And they had like the nursery nurse propping their heads up while I was reading a story in English or doing flashcards. 
mean, wow. <laughs> it was really fun. And I think that's where I sort of found my niche for really young kids. But um, yeah. I spent two years in Japan where I met my husband, who okay, is cool. German, actually. Okay. Uh huh. And then we moved to Europe and ended up here in the UK. And there was a real shortage here in the UK for teachers, especially secondary teachers. So I decided to take up the call and went back to uni to train as a secondary English literature and language teacher. And I did that for about four or five years and hated it. Oh, <laughs> Um, the teaching was great. I loved the students. Um, I got my in a really lovely school, but the basically I was buried under paperwork. So and and legislation changes. Uh -huh. So when when I when I when we decided to start a family, I was like, yes, this is my get out of jail free card. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I took a career break, and um, and I was a mom for a few years. And okay. when I started, you know, needing something more than that, I noticed that the online ESL industry was just beginning to blossom, and yeah. put my my hooks into that. So I started out with VIP Kid. Later, I added on Bling ABC and Magic Ears, and I loved every minute of it. And wow. um, and that's how sort of I ended up teaching online. Right. Okay. So I knew yeah. you were with VIP Kid. I didn't realize that you were also with Bling and uh, Magic Ears. Cool. Yeah. They were they were a great mix. The yeah. Because uh, Bling scheduled termly. So you get a yes. block of, of the same students for four months or whatever. And then VIP Kids scheduled uh, bi weekly. So every two weeks. Yeah. They slotted in those. And then Magic Cures, I only ever did short notice with them. You get paid more. Okay. And yeah. um, you can book like 24 hours out. So they just yes. fit perfectly together. Oh, cool. Okay, funny. Yeah. I did sort of, I used VIP Kid because I only did short notice with them. I never did the bi weekly uh -huh. thing, except in the first maybe six months. So when I was working with GoGo -Go Kid and Magic Cures, I used um, VIP Kid to fill in. It's funny though. I never did short notice with Magic Ears. I I don't know. Oh I just really? Felt, yeah, I always um, felt better about having the. I didn't do them a lot of classes with them, but it's just you know everyone finds their own groove with like what yes. works, right? And kind of oh, yeah. Just and you do have so to have. Craft, uh, yeah. No, I mean like with especially with Magic Ears, you do have to um, really be confident on winging it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I sort yeah. of felt like I needed to know a little bit further in advance. VIP Kid, I could literally uh, wing it, but with um, with with Magic Ears, I had to. Yeah, it was a little yeah. bit a little bit more preparation and and uh, yeah, just awareness of everything. Exactly, there was, yeah. there was more yeah. <laughs> more going on. So then August <laughs> happens, and mm -hmm. then were you still teaching ESL online with companies in up until August? Like, where are you and where were you at with that, or? How, uh, do you mean the China crash? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not really. No, because uh, so if you rewind right to the beginning of the pandemic, my husband, who had been the major breadwinner in our family, lost his executive job really early days in the pandemic. Oh um, and it kind of just threw us all for a loop because I had been teaching like eight to 12 hours per week <laughs> online. It was a okay. hobby. Yeah. Um, and suddenly it had to be, you know, paying the mortgage. So I ramped up my hours like mad. I was doing 12 back to back lessons, six days a week um, and really burned out. And around that same time, um, I, because I started thinking, actually, I could make a lot more doing this freelance. I started taking on freelance students, but looking at the internet, what was out there, I was really dismayed that there was no curricula available that replicated that easy feeling of teaching yes. with VIP Kid and the like. Because what I loved about that job is you commit your 25 minutes teaching time and then yeah. shut your laptop and see ya. You know, that was yeah. it. Yeah. But when you freelance, it's very much of a case that you spend probably as much time prepping a lesson as you do teaching it. And that that's yeah. unpaid time as well. Exactly. So when I realized that there wasn't anything out there like this incremental pre-planned, yeah. really um, overarching curriculum, I got to thinking that 
I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I love a project. Um, yes. I have no qualms about setting a really lofty goal and just plugging away at it until it's done. And yeah. I got lucky too, because this was about a year into the pandemic and my husband had found another job, which meant that I could scale down my teaching hours again. And cool. so I kept my freelance students, scaled down my contracted hours and put everything I had into crystal clear ESL. I think that's just such a good testament to how like hard work really does pay off. And when you have a, well, when you see a need and you can see how you can serve others and help people and you know you have maybe a little bit more time you know to yeah. focus on it and i think good things can happen but i think that's also the case for teachers who are moving from platforms to freelancing you know if you buckle down and really do the work and set this time aside and have the goal at the end and work towards it like you will yeah. get there you'll get there it is hard work like yeah. crystal clear curriculum was hard work i'm sure and continues to be right? yes <laughs> but yeah. it's but it's worth it, like when you start to see, and now you're able to actually have this as a business and and sell mm -hmm. this product to teachers. So we'll get into that. Um, I just wanted to say a few folks were asking a couple of questions, um, and someone asked actually, where in the UK are you? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, Cheryl. I am near Southampton, right in the south, and I like to think of it as a California of England. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I spent about five years here in the Midlands, like near Birmingham, and I hated it it was just so soggy all the time and gray and um I just Southampton I mean it's still England so there's still plenty of rain but it is a lot sunnier and right near the beach right near great hiking in the new forest it's amazing oh wow yeah, yeah. cool awesome and uh Kimoto I'm wondering if actually if you are Japanese I'm in new to teaching can't get any jobs how do I go about that Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not a good idea to look at Chinese companies right now. Um, there are yeah. some non-Chinese companies. They don't pay as well. Um, but, you know, you can kind of do your do, do, do research on the Internet and look for different companies. But um, perhaps, you know, freelancing is, is an option for you, too. Is your cohort free? No, it is ninety seven dollars. Um, but it's uh, it's it's geared towards platform teachers. So um, that's kind of where we focus with with the crash that's happened in China. Um, Japan was intense. Hello, Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, from Taiwan. No, it is not Thailand. Yeah. So I also saw Kelly asking about Wonders curriculum. So let's say, okay, let's kind of back up a bit. A lot of teachers have, you know, with this crash in China, have decided to maybe take their students on in a private role and to teach them independently. Yeah. And they're kind of getting payment figured out and getting scheduling figured out and like, okay, I'm going to use Zoom or I'm going to use class and things like that. But now what do I teach? Because the parents are, you know, asking for certain programs and let's say, you know, teachers are creative and maybe wanting to go the route of actually creating their lessons. Um, do you have any ideas with that? How would you, how would you go about that? Yeah. You, what tools did you use or you know, any kind of suggestions there for us? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm assuming here that you don't have a background in linguistics or education. So for somebody yeah. who doesn't, I would recommend starting by looking at a wide variety of curricula that are out there, be the be them uh, digital or print, to get an mm -hmm. idea of what sort of things they are teaching at what levels. Now, I'm not condoning uh, infringing on any copyrights, but yeah. it's okay. You know, even as a teacher in schools, we look at other people's work or books or lesson plans and we like adapt and make them our own enough that we're not infringing copyright. So starting there and then how I do it is I start with uh, this massive overarching scope and sequence. So kind of um, break down how many levels I want to work it over. And in my case, it was seven and then link learning objectives to each proficiency level. So, you know, uh, maybe simple past tense is going to come in at level three and you kind of just bullet point them all down and then you break down those levels by theme into units. So the themes are a great starting point because you can quite easily integrate keywords and increase yeah. your students' vocabulary according to a 
a theme. And only from there are you actually going to work on creating the individual lessons and any supplementary resources. So it's yeah. kind of like this giant upside down triangle. Yes. And it's that is overwhelming for teachers. So then they're then yeah. they're going, okay, I don't want to do that. Like I, yeah. you know, parents are asking for wonders or Nat Geo or Reach Higher or things like that. So I see you know, and it's it's a viable type of program if you want to go with that. Sometimes parents, I, I always tell teachers, like, don't sell necessarily your program, sell your skills and let parents know that you are providing a flexible curriculum. And, you know, you might use this as a base, yes. but you also might pull in things because you don't want to be locked into um, only teaching one thing, because that's mm -hmm. the idea with being an independent freelance teacher. You're able to pull in different things and meet the needs of the student. You do. Um, and you run into the risk of um, not managing parents' expectations. You have to keep in mind, a lot exactly. of these parents are coming from VIP Kid or the other. And those curricula were really all singing, all dancing. They had so many AI opportunities and supplemental yes. resources and course books. And without paying thousands and thousands of dollars yourself to obtain those created, um, you know, all... Yeah together resources, you're not going to live up to it. So it's important yeah. to make them understand when they come with you that it will be different. And that doesn't mean worse because what they're paying for at the end of the day, as you said, Tim, is you. Yeah, exactly. So you'll get parents that will say, well, do you have, you know, pre-course viewing or homework? And that's something that you need to decide because you don't have to do things the way that VIP Kid did them. You're yeah. not able to because you just don't have the same resources um, yes. and and access. So you, you need to um, it's OK to sort of set out your own your own rules. Now, let's say um, in terms of le like you built your own lessons, essentially, and designed them and everything. What are some tools that you use? Because that might be helpful for people to know, like what you use. Do you Google, so I started off Google just slides? on PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, and that, when you integrate, I use Zoom, when you integrate the Zoom annotative features, I find that's really good enough. It it does. Um, so Bling, for example, had a few more interactive click drag kind of gamified features, but um, VIP Kid, the students could really draw with a pen, highlight, it's pretty basic. Yeah. So. Um, actually, you can do that with pretty much anything. So if yeah. you want to just make it as simple as possible, start with PowerPoint. And then there's tons of games out there. I love um, Kahoot or Bamboozle right. or all of these sites you can integrate. And when you're on a platform like Zoom, it's really easy to toggle back and forth through different screens. Um, one of the yeah. thing I, things I started doing with my lessons is you can create your own word searches or crossword puzzles. So okay. reinforcing keywords with fun things like that, which you can either you know do in lesson or for homework. But homeworks are another thing. You should check out the website Wiser, W-I-Z-E-R. They do interactive homeworks. W-Y-Z-E-R. W I Z E R Z E R. Okay, this is yeah. work. Yeah, they do. Goodness. They're like a worksheet company, but they're digital worksheets. So oh, that's okay. really fun. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. And when you were creating your lessons, did you because you know I, I suggest having a framework to make it easier? Like let's say you are taking a program like Reach Higher or something and you're making you're going to do PPT slides from that, I think it's important to have because that's what VIP kid did. I mean, they had a structure, right? There was like yes. an opener, there was a sort of a um, icebreaker question or something, maybe. And then there was like some vocabulary development. And then there was some reading, some comprehension, some grammar, and some thematic type things throughout. So is that how, right. kind of how you frame things with yours? Very you much so. The triangle to the bottom at the <laughs> yes, yes. So I have to say, in terms of the style, I have taken a lot away from the three companies that I worked for previously, and also from when I was a teacher and and that academic qualification, because there is this whole school of um, academic pedagogy that we we teachers are supposed to follow, and I think it's even more important for online teachers because you're trying to really make a two D virtual space, a 3D classroom. So you're thinking of all the ways that you can get kids involved and really maximize their learning. Yeah, so true. So yeah. then um, 
there was a couple of questions. Let me just see here. Mostly people or folks are talking about companies. Um, so with, um, with you, so tell us a little bit about how you kind of arrived at crystal clear and the process of go of what that has, what's gone into that. I know it's a lot of work. Did you, are, and, and can you tell us a little bit about Crystal Clear and, and what it is and how it helps? Um, so my main, main offering is what I call the general step-by-step -step curriculum. So okay. the idea is to replicate that feeling of being a contracted worker, having an incremental cu curriculum where one lesson follows on from the, the previous um, and everything is kind of neatly in a unit with a yeah. theme and that you know that you're going to be hitting, you know, marks yeah. at certain times. So this is really great because I tend to think that there are two main factors to make your classes saleable. The first one is your students' enjoyment, but more so even than that is their progress because at the end of the day, it's the parent that's paying your salary and, right. and it's their decision ultimately. And they're focused on seeing progress. So having a clearly signposted curriculum with built-in assessments that then you can feed back at what your student has achieved on a regular basis is super important. Yeah. So, um, but at the same time, like you don't, it's hard because as a freelance teacher, yes, you may have the ideals to produce a tailored lesson for each and every student each and every time but you also are running a business right, right. so act, if you scale that back any time coming out of face to face time or rather in addition to is bringing down the bottom line for you and any mm -hmm. overheads are bringing down the bottom line for you and and really mm -hmm. making um they're they're inhibiting your financial viability as a business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's where there's this like discord between making sure that your lesson is great for each student, but minimizing the time investment outside class, if that makes sense. Yep. So how did you, how did you like, what is, what is crystal clear sort of based on? Um, you've, I think it's the Sefer standards, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, roughly, so I, I live in Europe and the Sefer standards are super renowned here. It's what they yeah. go by. It's the common European framework of reference for languages. And that's yeah. not just for English, that's for learning any language within Europe. Yeah. Um, so the curriculum is loosely aligned to that and then also loosely aligned. So I've tried to match up those standards to the VIP kid ones. Okay. And I say loosely because the thing is with something as finely incremental as my curriculum, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly where your student's going to launch from, you know, an A1 proficiency to a A2, for example. Right, so, right. I can't imagine. Like, and good for you. Like, I'm, you know, I don't think there's anything quite like yours that is so, you know, systematically similar to what we're used to with the Chinese yeah. company. Yeah. So. Um, do you have a team that helps you make these lessons? Like, how do you, you're doing it all no. on your own? <laughs> no. And the funny thing is, I, I get this question a lot. And I was in the lucky position that I started months ago, but I really only had about a seven month head start on all this change in China. So right. when, and, and the website's great and it looks professional. So people log on and they're like, yeah, I got this in the bag. And then they see that it's like, you know, not complete. And I'm like, literally, sorry, I, I just, I just started. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you think um, I probably can create at best one lesson per work day, at yeah. best, and that's without, you know, customer service or family obligations. So sure. Um, sure. it's slow, slow going. Yeah. But I think there's plenty to get your teeth into now, um, yeah. especially if you teach uh, lower level kids. Cause right. Okay. From I get a lot of people asking for the upper level curriculum yeah. and it's like, it's hard. There's not a lot out there. So I know that you're moving in that direction. It's just, yes, it's absolutely. You're right. There isn't a lot when it comes to the step-by-step. -step, definitely. There's a lot. If you, you are, um, gap filling, I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm working on level five now, which is about, yeah. um, B1 on the Sefer. Okay. 
and I'll be publishing the first level or the first lessons of that within the cool. next sort of. So would days that kind so. of equate to a VIP kid level five? Yes. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, that's getting starting to get up there in the kind of age nine to you know yeah. eleven range of of those students. Kelly says this sounds great. I will purchase if I get more students. Awesome. And I must say, <laughs> thanks, Kelly. <laughs> you, you know, people have reached out to me and said because um, I I am running this course the second time around, so I've been sharing about curriculum, and that's always one of the biggest challenges for people. Um, and they always say that your support is really great and that you're, you know, able to communicate with them and answer questions. So um, it's my downfall. I'll tell you. Me I too. Love I tell chatting you, I know, with I, people. I'm a one man show too. And I, I really <laughs> feel like I, I have to respond to everything. People have told me before, you don't have to respond to everything. And that's true. Yeah. But while I still can, I like to. Exactly. So. Yeah. Teacher exactly. Bren, uh, Irene teacher says, I've never heard Sefer pronounced. I had been saying it initial by initial. <laughs> Cypher, <laughs> yeah. Sefer, thanks. I, I did yeah, that, that in the not, beginning I didn't know too. What, how to pronounce it either. That was, that was Crystal, Sef yeah, Sefer. Um, how do you determine where a particular student's level is? And from there, I'm sorry, Komotso, you are South African. I mistakenly might have thought you were Japanese. Your first name sounds like it could be. Japanese, mm -hmm. right? A little bit, <laughs> maybe. Uh, anyway, how do you determine where the level is? And from there, do you create specific lessons for them? Yeah, so how, that's a challenge for yeah. the, uh, teachers as well, determining their- Well, if you're using my curriculum, you use my diagnostic lesson and it's like, oh, tick, yeah. tick, tick, oh, you slot right in here and it's all kind okay. of done for you, so. Very cool, okay, that's really nice to know that not all, not all curriculums um, that I've seen out there have that, so that's really, really cool. But um, if it's anybody else, uh, like if you're creating your own, for example, I would recommend visiting the Cambridge English website. Um, okay. And they have free diagnostic tools you can use against their, actually it is the Sefer. So they link oh, it okay. to your, your result to the Sefer. And then you can easily Google um, the Sefer diagnostic rubric. Mm. And it is a little bit like a scope and sequence, but it's, um, it's not like keywords or grammar. It's the student can express this. The student can converse about this. Um, and then you can pinpoint using that uh, big rubric what they'll need to learn next. So okay. that would be my, yeah. Good, good tip. Thank you. Yeah. Two more questions. One, what are some of the tools or like online things you've used to create your lessons? Do you use like what free, you know, give us some like, where do you get your images from? Do you design them? Do you get them from where? Oh, yeah. Tell this us all is, the this is difficult because I pretty exclusively use Pixabay, which is okay. um, such a great resource, but it doesn't have everything. And just like a freelance teacher, um, Crystal Clear ESL is entirely self-funded. I like to call it my shoestring startup. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> and um, so I know that you can contract on to more, I don't know. Do you pay for Pixabay? No, you don't have no, to. Okay. It's all free. Yeah. Oh, Pixabay is free. Yeah. Sorry. There yeah. are some of them that are, uh, are paid. You have some more premium images. Yeah. And I'm resisting at this point. I'm trying to make it work, but I do envision eventually. And the other thing that's lacking with Pixabay that I could probably pay for is where you get um, not necessarily individually drawn, but, you know, like caricatures and things that suit the dialogues that you're or mm -hmm. um, mascots or things like this. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just, I just don't have the budget at this point for that sort of thing. But Pixabay is great. Um, also Pexels, uh, Giphy, but I I'm not sure actually if Giphy is entirely copyright free or if they're just stealing the images from somebody else. <laughs> I think they are, but I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to say for sure. What about like Canva? Have you ever used Canva to design? Oh lessons? my goodness. I haven't used it for lessons, but it is okay. my favorite thing for, for everything graphics else. <laughs> of every yeah. type. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. Sure. And the capabilities with the free version of Canva too. I'm like, girl, why are you giving yeah. this away? <laughs> I know there's a lot, but it does. It, I mean, they entice me to pay for it. I pay for too many things, but they entice me to pay for it because I get, you know, you get a little bit more, like you get sort of yeah. some of the things that, um, yeah, I do a lot of like the frames and the picture in the frame and things oh, like that that I don't think are available on the free. Oh, they're so, amazing. Yeah. Daniel says, I thought she was saying Zephyr and wondered if I was way behind the times for not. 
Thanks, Zephyr. Yeah. And my last question is, I know that Crystal Clear has big visions and has a lot more going on. What else is there? And I'm just going to put your um, your link here in the banner okay. there. Yeah, if folks are interested. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, this I is- I know you're doing okay. a payment portal as well. Yeah. So I have a payment portal up and running. Uh, it's only available in conjunction with a curriculum subscription. So it basically works as a way to get your students in China to prepay your whole subscription bundle. Gotcha. Um, so that's really easy and uh, all done for you. Cool. I, I just, you know, stemming away from teaching and contracted teaching and freelance teaching, this company has opened my eyes to how creative an entrepreneur can be. And my husband quite regularly has to steer me back on course because I'm like, what if we do this? Next, yeah. I want to do this. And so I really envision things like um, creating some print publications, the workbooks that the VIP kid uh, students were used to, right. for example, that complement my curriculum someday. Um, a language school myself, maybe as an cool. offshoot to the company and hire other teachers. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, I just this, and oh, so a big options, one. Right? Yeah, there are a big one that I've actually already started because I'm doing this with a, a course called IELTS Made Simple. Um, it's a 20 lesson course that I host for another developer, because another thing that I noticed about the market is that it's there are quite a few um, sites out there where curriculum developers can sell their material, but not mm. everybody wants to sell. People might like that residual income of a subscription model, which I haven't found for curriculum mm. developers, but I can offer it. So I'd be particularly interested in people who wanted to have reading courses hosted public speaking courses, you know, those really fine tuned oh, cool. specific niche yeah, really courses. Neat. Yeah. Come and talk to me if you have something because I'd love to host your content. Great. You're an entrepreneur after my own heart. I love the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, let's see if there's any other comments or questions. Hi, Grace. Yes, Grace was in my program in November. Good to see you. Um, and people are arguing about over the Pix of A, Pixel Bay. Pix of A, yeah. And Zephyr <laughs> instead of the Zephyr. <laughs> yes. Maybe I speak too quickly. Maybe it's the Canadian in you. Yeah, probably. It's, it's probably roll. like the mismatch of Canadian English, British English, and then we also speak German in our house. So oh <laughs> I just God. can't get it right. I have to tell you, like, I love a good Canadian accent, and you have like a good, solid Canadian accent. I could oh. pick it out anywhere. Yeah. Wow. Even after 15 years abroad, I can't shake it. Yeah, abroad. or I don't know. It's just abroad. the way you say it. <laughs> There's a bit of British in that one. But okay. I'm Canadian and I've got like, everybody thinks I'm American. I was born in Bermuda yeah. and then I my mom's Canadian, but I really didn't live there until I was 18 for about 10 oh. years before I moved over to Asia. And um, I always say I'm Canadian just because over here it's sort of like more identifiable for people than saying you're from Bermuda. But right. I don't have a Canadian, like, uh, I, I, I hear it in your accent, loud and wow. clear. Crystal clear. <gasps> yep, crystal clear. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, this has been great. Um, if you do have any questions, do drop them in um, about, yes, material for adult beginners. Yeah, that's what she was talking about, I think. So, yeah, yeah thank you so much, Crystal. And um, the links for Crystal's YouTube channel is also down below because tomorrow... I'm going to be on her channel talking about diversifying your income as an ESL teacher, something that I love to talk about and have been doing myself for several years. So that's going to be really fun. So if you'd like to hear this conversation continue over on Crystal's YouTube channel, feel free to click that link. Give her yes, a subscribe. Please. And uh, yeah, really appreciate your time, Crystal. Thank you so much. What are you oh, doing for the for rest of the me. afternoon? Uh, taking my kids to swimming lessons. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's fast times over here, Tim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we'll let you get to it. Thank you so much. And um, oh, I'll see you tomorrow pleasure. on your channel. Okay. Yeah. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And if you uh, want to connect with Crystal, please head on over to uh, esl-curriculum.com and see what she's offering. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of resources out there, but I can tell you that Crystal is a, a wonderful person to connect with and to get supported from if you are kind of wondering what her curriculum involves and, and how it can help you solve that problem in this equation of going independent. And again, I'll remind you that the launch course is 
starting again on Monday, the 29th. So would love to have you join if you are kind of just needing a little bit of support um, and a community, some accountability and a roadmap to helping you to go independent. I would love, love to have you. So until next time, thank you everybody for being here and hope you have a great week. I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a wonderful one.